Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to determine the shapes of molecules. Now I should just point out that many students find this tricky. However, it's quite straightforward if you learn a few basic rules. First, we need to look at how scientists represent the three-dimensional shapes of molecules. I'm showing you here the structure of methane. As you can see, methane has a central carbon atom surrounded by four hydrogen atoms. Solid lines such as these two tell us that these two bonds lie on the plane of the screen or the page. So what that means is that these two hydrogen atoms also lie on the plane of the page. A solid wedge like this one tells us that this bond is coming out of the plane of the page. So that means that this hydrogen atom is also coming out of the plane of the page. And finally, a dotted wedge tells us that this bond is projecting back behind the plane of the page. So that means that this hydrogen is also behind the plane of the page. We're going to be using these bonds whenever we need to show the three-dimensional shape of a molecule. Now, in order to work out the shapes of molecules, we need to look at electron pair repulsion theory. Electron pair repulsion theory states that the shape of a molecule is determined by the electron pairs surrounding the central atom. And I should point out that we're only referring to the outer shell in this case. This is based on the fact that pairs of electrons repel all of the other electron pairs. The electron pairs now move as far apart as possible to minimise this repulsion. Now we've been referring to pairs of electrons, but you need to remember that a covalent bond is a pair of electrons. Now one thing I need to point out is that in this video, we're only looking at molecules with no lone pairs of electrons on the central atom. We'll be looking at how to deal with lone pairs in the next video. OK, let's look at a simple example. I'm showing you here the molecule beryllium chloride. In this molecule, the central atom is beryllium. This is covalently bonded to two atoms of chlorine. So this means that we've got two electron pairs around the central atom. These two pairs of electrons repel each other and move as far apart as possible. Now the furthest that they can move apart is in a straight line like this. Scientists say that this molecule has a linear structure, in other words a straight line. And the angle between these two bonds is 180 degrees. Here's another linear molecule. This is carbon dioxide. Now this illustrates a really important point. As you can see, the central atom is carbon, and this has two double bonds to oxygen atoms. When looking at multiple bonds, such as double or triple bonds, to determine the shape of the molecule, we treat a multiple bond as a single bonding area. In other words, we treat a double bond the same way we treat a single bond. So these two bonding areas repel and move as far apart as possible. And again, in this case, the angle between the bonding areas is 180 degrees. So you need to learn that if a central atom has two bonds or bonding areas, then it will have a linear shape with a 180 degree bond angle. However, this is not the case if the central atom has a lone pair of electrons. And as I said, we look at those in the next video. In the next section, we're going to look at other examples of the shapes of molecules. OK, this molecule is boron trifluoride, and we've seen this in the videos on covalent bonding. This has a central boron atom bonded to three fluorine atoms. Again, the electron pairs in these three covalent bonds repel and move apart as far as possible. In this case, the bonds arrange themselves towards the points of a triangle like this and the bond angle between them is 120 degrees. Scientists call this shape trigonal because it's based on a triangle. Now, if you viewed the molecule from the side, you would see that it's flat. Scientists call this planar, which means flat. So this shape is called trigonal planar, and you'll see this whenever you've got a central atom with three pairs of bonding electrons around it, as long as the central atom has no lone pairs of electrons. OK, what if this central atom has four pairs of bonding electrons around it? Well, in this case, we've got a tetrahedral molecule, and a good example is methane. All of the bond angles in tetrahedral molecules are 109.5 degrees. Here's another tetrahedral molecule. This is the ammonium ion. And again, the bond angles are all 109.5 degrees. OK, so what if this central atom has five pairs of bonding electrons around it? A good example is phosphorus pentachloride. Well, in this case, in order to minimise repulsion, two of the bonding pairs move to opposite sides of the molecule, and we can see these here. The other three bonding pairs now take up a central position lying on the same plane, and they spread themselves out as far as they can. Now, there are two bond angles to consider here. 
the bonds pointing up and down are at 90 degrees to the central plane, whereas the angle between the bonds lying on the central plane is 120 degrees. Now this shape is called trigonal bipyramidal. Trigonal because the three atoms on the central plane are forming a triangle, and bipyramidal because these form two pyramid shapes with the two other atoms. So here's the pyramid above the plane, and here's the pyramid below. Now I should just point out that if you're following the OCR spec, then you're not expected to know the trigonal bipyramidal shape. However, I'd recommend that you're aware of it, in case it appears in a question where you have to apply your knowledge. OK, I'm showing you here the compound sulfur hexafluoride. As you can see, this molecule has got six bonding pairs around the central atom. Scientists call this shape octahedral. Again, we have a bonding pair above and below the central plane, and four bonding pairs lying on the central plane. Just like before, the bonds pointing up and down are at 90 degrees to the central plane. However, in this case, the angle between the bonds lying on the central plane is also 90 degrees. In the next video, we're going to look at the shapes of ions and how to deal with lone pairs of electrons. Mm -hmm.